You know? You can do better than what you are doing right now. You know, it doesn't matter what you've been through and where you are in life. If you count your blessings and if you if you look around you, you realize that God has prevented some things that could have happened to you. That's why you are still standing here. And for you to stand in his presence, fold your arms and shut your mouth. It's an attitude of ingratitude. <laughs> Hear me. You know, last week I sent Bishop Nyaku to go pray for a lady in, the, in this church, married to a very prominent man. I learned she had some kind of a problem with her hips and she was rushed to the hospital for a surgery. Whilst the surgery was taking place, the surgeon made a mistake. And after the surgery, she developed a blood clot and it started rising in one of her legs and they have to rush her back to theater to amputate the leg. Beautiful woman, good husband, great kids, beautiful children. When I heard it, I said to Bishop, let's pray against suicidal thoughts and tendencies. Because she never thought that she was going to lose one of her legs over a simple surgery, a hip problem. And they said they have to correct it. So they need to go inside and correct something. In the process of trying to correct it, an error took place. And you can say it was an accident. In the spirit, there is no accident. It was calculated. It was a demonic target that a demon was given an assignment to carry out something before the end of the year. And I was going to preach on preparing for the harvest, but I, the spirit impressed on me to switch and to deal with deliverance from evil. Somebody say deliverance from evil. I was watching a video that was sent to me from America on a guy who was a high priest of Satan for many years. And he was giving his testimony of what he did in the satanic kingdom for Satan. And how he was given assignment to kill people and how he could kill people. And when it comes to killing Christians, he didn't charge. He charged for other people, but for Christians, he wouldn't charge because he saw killing Christian as pleasure. But he said that an assignment was given to him to kill a, special, a, a Christian lady, and it was very difficult for him. And he said that Jesus told him, you can't have her. And when the people who gave him the assignment came and said, how come you haven't finished her? He said to them, her God said, I can't have her. And, and I was listening, I was listening, and I was also figuring out and trying to examine the spirit behind the guy to see whether he's genuine or false. 
Because it's not just what the accuracy of what you are hearing, you must check the source of the information. And you must also judge the information in line with scripture. And when I concluded that he's genuinely born again, I started listening and I was very attentive. And he said that a lot of men of God who preach the gospel needs deliverance. Because some of them don't understand the spiritual world at all. And I said to myself that he's true. He, he, the guy is saying something because it looks like we are so ignorant of the spiritual world and the reality of the spiritual world that we don't understand how the spiritual world operates. We are very ignorant of it. We are ignorant of it through the same scriptures that must enlighten us. And I'll, I'll explain to you why I'm saying that. The season of Christmas is a good season, but it's also an evil season. Because why is one family is rejoicing and celebrating, another family might be grieving and crying. And there are reasons for that. Spiritual alertness, soberness, and being watchful is very important in this season. On the 20th of November, I was supposed to be in Abuja to speak there for a great ministry. And just before the 20th, Bishop Johnny said, this is the private jet that has been sent to pick you up and everything and to bring you back. It will take so many people, blah, 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 and all that. And I said to him, you have to call the pastor and tell him I can't make it. And he said, Papa, you can't pull out. And I said, I will pull out because I'm unsettled about this trip. And I'm having in my spirit some discomfort and I'm not feeling the trip and I'm not getting clearance in the spirit so I'm not going so the pastor flew down and said Papa you have to come and I said I want to be with you but I'm not getting clearance in my spirit. something is off about this trip and I don't want to tempt the Lord I don't want to tempt God and I don't want to put the name of the Lord and the congregation and all that I represent in harm's way by acting on faith. This is not a faith issue. It's not a matter of courage. It's a matter of being sensitive. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So I said, I said, you have to, you have to let me off the hook on this one. I can't do it. And it was later I understood why. But at that time, I didn't have clarity. But I also knew, because the Spirit hasn't spoken to me, I hadn't heard the voice of God. I didn't have a vision, no dream, nothing. I just felt this discomfort in my spirit. And I was unsettled inside of me about the trip. Anytime I was praying about it, I didn't feel it. There was some discomfort, and I knew that, mm -mm. Something is off and I will not tempt the Lord. So I said to them, I appreciate all the efforts you've made to have me, but I'm sorry I can't make this trip. It was, it was tough, but I have to follow the Holy Spirit. One of the things you must understand in this season of Christmas is we had a meeting with all our bishops and our pastors from all over the world. And I said to them that we want to look at the target of every church for 2018 those who met their target and those who didn't and those who didn't i said to college of bishops sanction them fire some remove some because they didn't meet their target say all truth is parallel say it again all truth is parallel now as soon as that came to me the lord said do you understand what you just did that in the demonic world Satan gives his demons and principalities targets. And 22nd on the demonic calendar is their last meeting for the year. 22nd December. 
on the demonic calendars. I will remind me to bring out the demonic calendar on Wednesday. You will see their demonic calendar, the particular dates. One of them is October. Remind me, I think October 21st or so. Halloween. Yeah, it's part of their demonic calendar. I'll tell you what they do. Anyway, so then it came to me that they are going to have to come and answer for give an account whether they met their target or not then the spirit said do you know why during Christmas time strange things happen to people all kinds of accidents misfortunes crisis in families outbreak of fire fire outbreaks all kinds of crazy things and he said it's because demons have to meet their targets and so because sanctions will be taken against them when they don't meet their target they have to go out of their way and do anything to meet their target and their target is to destroy human beings i'll prove it to you as we go along and i don't want you to be a believer and be ignorant of his devices and listen, I'm, I'm a faith preacher. I'm the first preacher in this country who preached faith and prosperity in the 70s before anybody. And I'm a faith preacher and I know confession of scripture. But I'm not also ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So the fact that I'm a faith preacher and I confess faith also does not mean I'm ignorant. I know and understand how he works. And so I want to preach and teach on deliverance from evil. And then I want us to pray for families. I want us to pray for deliverance from crisis, family crisis, national crisis. I want us to pray for the preservation of the life of the sitting president. Then I want us to pray for the preservation of the life of the three past president. President John Ajikun Kufo, J.J. Rawlings, and John Ramani Mahama. We need to pray for these three presidents. When I heard about George Bush Senior Pass, at the age of 94 and Qatar, President Qatar is still alive. I said, this is the way it has to be. This is the way it has to go. And for whatever reason in Africa, we take delight in losing our statement and our elders because of partisan politics. But somebody asked me the other day why I deal with past president, present president, I say, I am an ambassador of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador. I don't take sides with anybody. When I went to the, when I went to Liberia and attended the uh, President George Weah's uh, inauguration, after the inauguration, I went to visit the former president, spent some time with her in the house with, with Rosa. We went to spend some time with her because we've known her. And I also visited the former vice president. I'm going to Celerion very soon. And when I go, I'll be visiting the, the president. And at the same time, I'll go and visit the former president. He's my friend. I know him. And the former vice president is here. He's going back. When I go, I'll go visit him. I don't belong to your party. I belong to the kingdom. <laughs> Amen. You can't claim me for your party. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I am what I am by the grace of God. Say amen. I don't belong to your political parties. And I know in this church we have CPP here. We have NDC. We have MPP. You belong to them. I don't belong to anybody. The only party I give my votes to that they don't win is CPP for whatever reason the last time I went to vote when I got there I said is there any representative of CPP here there was none of them there and I saw MPP I saw NDC and I said this is why we are not winning election the guys are not here to defend our cause but I still gave them my vote anyway because it's my father's party stand on your feet lift up your hands everybody say Heavenly Father Breathe upon us by the Holy Spirit a fresh breath 
the breath of life wake us up revive us quicken us one more time show us your glory one more time in the name of Jesus let chains shackles and yokes be broken in the name of Jesus let every agenda of the enemy backfire in the name of Jesus let curses backfire in the name of Jesus do a new thing in the mix of your people spirit of the living God brood over this gathering and over this house oh word of God have a free course let God arise let his enemies be scattered we shut them out of the enemy we silence every tongue and voice of the accuser we silence it now in the name of Jesus as I clap my eyes silence the voice of the accuser silence the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Amen please can you welcome somebody love somebody hug somebody before you are seated thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you can clap and the shout of the king is in the house amen hallelujah second corinthians chapter 2 and the 11 verse next week we'll be dealing with preparing for the harvest preparation for the harvest when preparation meets an opportunity is a kairos moment when preparation meets opportunity anything is possible all things are possible when preparation meets with opportunity you must prepare for the harvest of the coming year for 2019 is the year of the harvest everything shall multiply you will see increase like never before at the same time there might be increase of evil but let there be deliverance for the righteous let the righteous be delivered let the house of God be delivered let the seed of the righteous escape escape in the name of Jesus come on shout and say escape escape hallelujah second corinthians 2 11 lest satan should get an advantage of us mm -hmm. for we are not ignorant of his devices so this is how he gains advantage he keeps us ignorant as long as he can veil us demonic veils cast a veil on us the bible said who bewitch you not to know the truth who bewitch you who cast a spell on you who veiled you his agenda is to veil you and i when he come to his devices he doesn't mind you knowing all the faith scriptures making all the faith confession but he wants to keep us ignorant of his devices methodologies and strategies if he can keep us ignorant of his devices, games, agenda, methodology, as long as he can keep us ignorant, he will always have an advantage. He doesn't mind us confessing scripture, which is great and it is necessary, and I do the same. But he wants to keep us veiled so that we are ignorant of his strategies and his devices and that gives him an advantage i pray in the name of jesus that the veil will be lifted off that the veil will be destroyed i command the destruction of demonic veils over this house over your life over your loved ones over your family that no one here will be veiled and will be blinded in the name of jesus if you believe it shout yes come on shout yes in the name of jesus Deliverance from evil. 
There are devices. For in the hearts of men, many are the devices thereof. But the counsel of the Lord, it shall stand. For there is no knowledge, wisdom, or understanding against the counsel of Elohim. Let the counsel of the Lord prevail. Let the counsel of the Lord override every other counsel and every other deception. Put your hands together. Shout yes. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Not in you, in yourself, but in the Lord. In the Lord. In the Lord. And in the power of his might. Be strong. The 11th verse. Put on Put the, on whole, the armor. whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The what? The wiles of the devil. There are wiles. De deception. Devices. Of the enemy. I don't know why we don't want to pay heed to this. The same preacher that talked about grace. The Paul, then brought about the Pauline revelation. He's the one that wrote this. And these are real after the first service, some prominent person came and saw me and said, I need to talk to you. And said, there is an, a situation you need, to be, you need to know of. An old preacher who used to preach powerfully all over the nations, he used to preach for me in this house. When I was coming up, I was a young preacher. So it's a friend of mine. Struggled to marry and got married. Had children. Later, I'm told, I didn't even know this. The wife left, went back to her country. Then, through some error, one of his sons sets the house on fire. His house on fire. Then, after the kids left, traveled and left him, went to their mom, <clears throat> told he was, he's been so depressed, locked himself up in a room. Won't come out, won't eat. They had to break into the room, saw him almost dead. Some of his organs have been affected. They just rushed him to the hospital. So I just called some of the doctors and I said, go move him, move him from every, any, where he is right now. Send him to this other hospital and let's do whatever needs to be done. If we have to fly him out, let's fly him out and help him. Deliver us from evil. Somebody say, but how come he preached the gospel, save people, deliver people, and this should happen to him? There are some of you who think that because you are good and you do good, you are exempted from evil. It's not true. You that do good, you are the target of evil. Evil, evil's target is good. And evil is not satisfied until it destroys good. And evil will attack anything that represents good. Because good is the opposite of evil. So stop telling me that you don't last over anybody's wife or husband. You don't think ill of anybody. So you are exempted from evil. You are joking. You are the target of evil. Turn to somebody and say, do you know that you are a target? Yes, you are. So stop this ideology, philosophy, and doctrines you are playing with. Jesus said, even our good works are like a filthy rag before God. So your good is no guarantee that you are exempted from evil. I will show you how you are exempted from evil. The devil is not the respecter of any of us. He went to Jesus and he will come to you. He will knock at anybody's door. He will attack your loved ones. He will attack your children, your husband, your wife. He will attack anything you love as an indirect way to hurt you. Whenever he attacks the believer, 
is an indirect way of hurting God. And somebody will say, okay, then God has to do something. He does something. But there are rules of engagement. He has to operate by certain rules he has set up. That's why God cannot override your will and my will. That is the problem here. If we were robots, then God can override some things. But he cannot override our will. He has to operate within the set rules and laws he has set himself. That makes it very difficult. There are, there's a role you and I must play to enable God to act on our behalf. One of the reasons for the 10%, God says the 90 is yours, but the 10 is mine. The reason for the 10, as we have heard and we all know, is the 10 gives God the right of ownership over the 90. And it also gives him authorization to protect the 90, redeem the 90, sanctify the 90, and multiply the 90 by acknowledging and giving him the right of ownership over all you have through the tithe. And man said, I want the 90, but I must also have the 10, which is that which gives you authorization to rebuke the devourer, Satan, who owns the earth because Adam ceded it to him. And God said, when you give me the 10%, it's not about the money. It's the principle that you acknowledge my right of ownership over all things. You give me authorization to rebuke the devourer. You acknowledge that you are a steward of all things. And by that act, I have authorization to rebuke the devourer. I'll take care of Satan. And number two, it gives me ownership over everything you have and I can protect it when the devourer comes in. That's why when you have money, let's say you have a thousand Ghana cities and you use it to do everything, then after you pay 10%, it's not tight. It's not tight because you haven't honored God. You haven't come under the law of first things. God demands and deserves the first. So God said the only way you give me authorization and rights of ownership over everything you have to rebuke the devourer is when you give me first the 10 to redeem the 90. If you don't give me first the 10 and you give me the 10 after, it doesn't matter if it's a trillion dollars, it's unacceptable, I don't receive it because it's not the money, it's the principle. See, I hear you. Come with me to 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the because, devil... Because, say because, 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 because. Tell somebody because, because, because. So in this season of Christmas, you need to be sober. You need to be sober. You need to be vigilant. What does it mean? Be at your watch. Be watchful. Be sensitive. Don't be carried away by the season and all the activities of the season because a lot is going on and some of you are targets. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for somebody and some of you, your loved ones, your children are targets but I command the deliverance. I said, I command deliverance. I command deliverance from eminent dangers. I command deliverance from evil. Program in the womb of time that you and your house, my house, and this house, and this nation will escape it. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together and say yes. The enemy is seeking for someone to devour. He's seeking for someone to devour. He's seeking for people who are ignorant of his devices. He's seeking for people who are making faith confession but are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You see, as never before, you and I need the Holy Spirit because he is our guide. Even when it comes to interpretation of scripture and the scriptures, without the Holy Spirit, we can read the scriptures preach on the scriptures and lack an understanding of what we are preaching and teaching and talking about. I'm telling you. A prophet came to see me the other day and he's a good guy. 
And he said, Papa, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw that I was giving share butter. Share butter to people. And people were getting healed. And miracles were taking place. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is telling me that I should use share butter. And start giving people share butter and miracles will take place. And I said, yes, you've seen the revelation. But the interpretation is wrong. And he said, Papa, what is the interpreter? I said, butter stands for the riches of the word. When I wash my feet with butter, then shall the rocks, or the rock, which is Jesus, give me rivers of oil. So I said, it's a deep revelation. But the meaning is this. God wants you to teach the people the word. Not just prophecy, prophecy. For them to apply the word of God to themselves. And when they start applying the word, they will see mind-blowing wonders and miracles. Then, he said, Papa, who you did for? Wabing. Wabing. So I told him, go and teach the people the word. Now, he got the message. So, he buys my tape. And I said, buy my tape. Preach the same thing I'm preaching. Don't worry about going to study for any revelation. Just preach the same thing I'm preaching. You can change the title. Preach the same thing. Now, can you imagine what would have happened to that guy if he didn't have me to help him interpret that dream? He would have been the latest man of God because he has access. He has heavy following. He would be the latest man of God with Inkoto revelation and ministry. Share butter ministry. And people will have faith in share butter and they'll start getting resolved because he had a revelation of it in the spirit. So it's easy to condemn people, to judge people, but sometimes you don't know what lead people to do the things they do. That's why Jesus said, when a sower went to sow and slept, and an enemy so tears. And then the servant came and said, Did you not sow a good seed? What, are, what is this test we see? Shall I go and uproot them? And the master said, No, 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 no. Leave them all to grow. At harvest, we will separate the tares from the wheat. And this is something politicians have to be very, very careful of, especially those of you who are power. And people who have influence, because sometimes I've been tempted where people will come to me and say, Papa, all these prophets, Papa, you have to attack, you have to do something, you have to speak out. And I said, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Because in trying to correct what is wrong, if you don't exercise a lot of restraint and skills, you might end up destroying also the good. So you have to give it time. Tell somebody, give it time. And this is where politicians have to be very, very careful. When it comes to spiritual things and matters of faith, you have no jurisdiction in that area. You have to stay clear and focus on your political issues and don't mingle with spiritual and religious matters. The implication is too much. When it comes to matters of faith, you don't mingle with it. You let faith people deal with it. Come with me to Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Luke 22, 31 and 22. And the Lord said, uh -huh. Simon, 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 behold, mm -hmm. Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see, Satan, look at me. Do you know some of you, Satan has targeted you? He's targeted your loved one, your children. I was dealing with something some years ago about one of my kids. And I, I was crying and I said, Lord, why? Why am I helping other people's children? Why is this happening to me? And the Lord said, it's to hurt you. It's something designed to hurt you and if it's possible, stop you from preaching the gospel. But it's also to 
make you understand that you are not God, that you are human, that you are man like anybody else. And it doesn't matter how much God uses you, you are still not God, and you still need God. The devil is not the respecter of persons. He went to Jesus. He tempted Jesus. He will come to you and I. He don't care how much you've been in the faith. And when I hear all these super preachers and make it, they make it look like they have never been tempted. They don't get tempted. They have authority over the devil and they are so powerful and they are super human beings and super spirits and Holy Ghost. You, I, I laugh. You are joking. You're dealing, with, you're dealing with a fallen archangel, an anointed cherub, that even the archangel, Michael, will not dare bring an accusation against him. And you mortal, flesh and blood, you are so anointed that you can dare Satan. You can't dare him. Number one, you can't bind Satan. You can't bind him. Bound has not yet come, Revelation. Number two, you can't resist Satan. You can't resist him. Unless you submit to God, you can't resist the devil. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. Then resist the devil and he will flee. You can't resist him when you are not under authority. And there are people who are living in disobedience and rebellion and stubbornness. Anti-authority. Submit to nobody. Law to themselves. And you want to take the devil up? What is wrong with you? You know, so when I see Christians and preachers daring the devil, just because you think you have some level of success and you think you have arrived, you are, you are joking. You are a kid. You don't understand the rules of engagement at all. You are a joke. You are dealing with a falling archangel. You know what it means? When he lost his place in heaven, he did not lose his powers, his anointing, and his gifts. And the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So please understand. The Bible said, he that is born of God keepeth himself and the wicked one cannot touch him. One of the ways that you can be exempted from the enemy's attack is obedience and submission to God. Even on those grounds, God has the right to give permission for your faith to be tested. You saw what he said? Go back to Luke 22. Go back to Luke 22, 31. I 32. Look at 32. But I have prayed for thee, for uh -huh. thee uh -huh. that thy faith fail you see, not. That what? Thy faith. That what? Thy faith. That what? Thy faith fail He's not. looking for your faith. It's your faith he wants. He wants to attack your faith. So you stop believing in God. You start doubting God. Start questioning the word of God. You doubt God. You doubt the scriptures. And you are coming to church. But you don't have faith in God. Because your faith is under attack. I command every attack on your faith to be destroyed. I command the destruction of every attack on your faith. I command your faith to come alive. I command your faith to break loose in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. And there are many ways he attacks our faith. He can attack your faith by offense. Offense. Simple offense. Unforgiveness. A feeling of betrayal. Feel used, abused, taken advantage of, and exploited. Can attack your faith. There are many ways he attacks us. But his target is your faith. Jesus said, Peter, I have interceded for you. That you will be spared. Because you have become a target. Do you know how many of you are targets? 
of the enemy in your family? Jesus said, a man's enemy shall be those of his own house. There's a parable in tree. Abuebibe kawa. The thing that is looking to hurt us is close to us. Makadabasa. Meleko mutalahasit. I called somebody the other day and I said, where are you? Where are you? And he told me where he was. But he didn't tell me who was with him. Then after that, I called someone else who knows this individual. And I said, have you heard from so-so and so? He said, yes. He's with so-so and so. But when I talked to him, he didn't tell me who was with him. As soon as he told me who was with him, I understood why I had to call him and why I have to pray for him. Because you see, the enemy, he doesn't operate just like that. He's a disembodied spirit. He needs human mind, human imagination, human voices, and emotions, and will to operate. So what he does is to position somebody around you who you call a friend or a loved one. And he works through that individual when he's ready to strike. And Paul calls it a thorn in the flesh or a messenger of Satan. A thorn. A thorn is known as Nkase, 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 Anna, Nga, Nbe, Nbe, whatever it is, Nbe, Nbe. But it's something that pierces. Chooks create discomfort. So you are never fulfilled. You are never satisfied. On one hand, you are doing well. But on another hand, things are going against you. But I pray in the name of Jesus that between now and the end of this year, any turn in your flesh be cut off in the name of Jesus. Be arrested in the name of Jesus. Be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Every messenger of Satan, let them be terminated in the name of Jesus, arrested in the name of Jesus, interrupted in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, put your hands together, shout yes. A tone. A tone. A tone. A tone to vex you, to irritate you. I was talking to a man of God the other day in another country. And he said to him, Papa, he said, I was lying down and a spirit came into my room and I was watching the spirit. And he said, and the spirit entered into my wife. And when he entered into her, the Lord said, watch something. And when she woke up in the morning, she was acting very strange. And it wasn't like her. It was another person, a disembodied spirit, have entered her. And he said, what do you think? And I said, whatever spirit entered her has a legal right to do so. So there is a technicality and a legality that hasn't been addressed and dealt with that gave that spirit the right to enter here. And I said, that spirit is going to be on assignment now to buffet you if you don't deal with it. And I said, anytime you are dealing with her from today, you must always remember that you are dealing with someone else working through her and not her. And these are spiritual matters. If you are ignorant of his devices, you may be responding to flesh and blood, but it's something else working. Like this preacher whose wife have left him and he's down and I've decided to end it all. It's a spirit. No. 
He was targeted. And the closest person they could use to bring him to the state where he is right now is her. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Yea, let them be as chaff before the wind. Make them as Zamuna. Yea, as Oreb. At the, at the river of Kesha. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Destroy their tokens. Frustrate the tokens of liars. Divide their tongues. Break their ranks. Command their curses to boomerang. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Deliver the seed of the righteous. We command the deliverance of everyone. A. Perfected by the enemy. We command deliverances. Deliverances for the seed of the righteous. Deliverances for men and women. For families. For children. For loved ones. Deliverances for the sitting president and for the three former president. Deliverances from the enemy's agenda. Deliverances from national crisis. Deliverances from national grief. Deliverances for family grief. Deliverances from imminent danger in the air, on land, and on water. Put your hands together. Shout yes. Mokatalaha. Lift up your hands for one minute. Speak to the Lord. Lift up your hands. Speak to the Lord for a minute, everybody. Lekosoba. Maladakus. Ikafada hasus. Leikatuba hadas. Lamanda kabasa. Hey! Let our seed be delivered. I command the deliverance of the seed of the righteous. Wherever they are, let them be delivered. From the street of Africa, Europe, Asia, Latin and South America, the Middle East, North America, we command the deliverance of the seed of the righteous. We command the deliverance of everyone that nameth the name of Christ. Let them be delivered. Let them escape. Let the enemy's agenda boomerang in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. Church, the enemy has targeted somebody. You know, after the first service, somebody came to see me and I knew exactly what he was dealing with. He said, Papa, when you were preaching, I saw a big tree. A big tree. A big tree fell. A big tree fell. And I said, I understand. A big tree fell. A big tree fell on the political scene. But in the name of Jesus, anyone targeted before their time that will cause this nation pain or grief or will set this nation back, let that agenda and let that programming of diviners, of those who practice mysticism, yea, mediums, sorcerers, let their prediction, let their agenda backfire in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together, command backfire, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, backfire. Amen. At the same token, let any evil tree. You see, whenever God comes to town and he does two things, he favors the righteous and he judges the wicked. So on that same token, any evil tree, 
in your father's house, in your mother's house, in this nation, let that evil tree fall. Let it fall. Let every evil tree in this nation fall. In the name of Jesus, on the same token, let every evil tree fall. Open your mouth. Say something. Now. Now. Any. Anyone. Any wife or husband. Any son or daughter of this house. Home or abroad. Who. Is being buffeted. Say buffeted by a messenger of Satan to buffet that individual whoever they are home or abroad wherever they are command their deliverance in the name of Jesus command the deliverance of any son daughter, wife husband of this house being buffeted being misrepresented buffeted by demons by a messenger of Satan, whoever they are, whatever they are, home or abroad, let them be released. Let them be acquitted. Let them be delivered. Open your mouth. Command deliverance. Jesus. Amen. You see, when he said, there was given to me a tongue in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Look at it. When he said a tongue in the flesh, it means it's very close to you. A batahumpa. Touch your body. Touch your body. Do this. Can you feel your flesh? Can you feel the flesh? The tongue is like that. When it's activated, you will feel it in your flesh. It means it's close. And it's not easy to deal with it. Because it's in your flesh. But God is a deliverer. I said God is a deliverer. Be delivered from every deception. Delivered from the tongue. Command deliverance from the tongue. The tongue. The tongue. Whatever it means. Whatever it represents. Open your mouth. Say, I command deliverance from the tongue. Deliverance. From every tongue. Whatever it means. Whatever it represents. Let the tongue be cut off. We cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. The tongue. We cut it off. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please sit down for two minutes. A tongue in the flesh. A tongue. Come with me to John chapter 10 verse 10. John 10 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal uh -huh. and to kill and to destroy. Uh -huh. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That is the will of God for you and I. It means that anything outside of that is not the will of God. And it's not automatic. You see, if everything the scripture says is automatic, then no believer must be sick. And no believer must be broke. Because he was healed. He was healed. By his stripes, we were. And if we were, then we are. By his stripes, we were healed. If we were, then we are. So you are not sick. Tell somebody, you are not sick. Anybody who says he's sick is a liar. Yeah, based on scripture, if you were, then you are. So you must not be sick. You cannot be sick. 
Say, I cannot be sick. But you are sick. You see the contradiction? It's a contradiction. The word of God says, you are healed. Reality says, you are sick. So you have to keep confessing what the word is saying until the word becomes flesh and overrides and supersedes what you call reality. Until you come there, you are disadvantaged. Until you come there, you are disadvantaged. And he became poor that we might become rich. So if he became poor that we must become rich, why are a lot of Christians broke? If you study the benefits of the cross, there are so many things Christians and believers are going through that we shouldn't go through. Dealing with things like depression, discouragement, lack, want. There are so many things he settled, he settled, he settled it on the cross, paid the price. We don't have to go through it, but we do. Why? It's still ignorance of how to enforce or how to appropriate the promise of the benefit of the cross. We don't get it until you know how to appropriate the finished work of the cross. You are still disadvantaged. It's still disadvantaged. These things are written and they have to be enforced. Tell somebody, enforce. enforce. Say, superimpose. superimpose. And appropriate. The laws are made by parliament, but parliament don't enforce the law. It's the law enforcement agents. The judge passes a verdict. She doesn't carry it out. He or she does not carry it out. The law enforcement agents have the mandate to carry it out. So there are promises in the world and things God has promised you and I. They are not automatic. You and I have the responsibility to enforce them to call for the manifestation of the things written. They will not just happen. That's why I say, put me in remembrance. Declare thou, that thou mayest be justified. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation or deliverance. If you don't say what is written, you don't benefit from what is written. It's not automatic. The enemy comes to kill. And at this season of Christmas, at this season, of God wants you and I to have life and have it more abundantly. But there is one called the evil one who wants to kill you, steal from you, and destroy your confidence in God and your faith in God. Strip you of joy and peace and cause you to grieve. But in the name of Jesus, by the knowledge of scripture, let it be prohibited in the name of Jesus. Let evil be averted from your dwellings in the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Finally, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Not in your logic or philosophy or how long you've known the Lord. But be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not your might. His might. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God. You need to be dressed for the season. Tell somebody, dress for the season. It's like winter. It's like raining season. Summer. You must dress for the season. And in this season, and at all seasons, there is a way that is required of us to dress. We have to dress in a particular way. We are doing a dinner for, a fundraising dinner for the National Cathedral. And I know that it's a controversial issue because there are all kinds of, I mean, opinions, philosophies, and logic about the National Cathedral. But I am committed to it because it is something that stands for the cause I stand for. Christianity, the cause of Christ. And... Um, I know that everybody has their own views of why we must build a national cathedral. We use money to build things like the stadium. I don't believe in football and I don't watch football. But I don't have a problem if we build a football stadium for those who like football and believe in football. And I wouldn't say that the money we should use to build a football stadium, we should use it 
to develop an area for the poor. Because Jesus said the poor you shall always have with you. But the fact of the matter is that it's not the country building it anyway. I'm the chairman for the fundraising committee and we started raising money already. We are raising money. By December the 28th, we will have over $1 million, about $1.5 million coming in as, as seed money. And there is more money we are raising from all over the place. And there are a lot of people who are making commitment. There is somebody who gave $500 million to build the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C. $5 million. $500 million or 500000 What was it? This was 500000 No. It was more than that. Okay, it was more than that. But he gave it to build the Bible Museum. And that there's going to be a Bible Museum of the first in the whole of Africa. So many things that comes with it. And for me, when it comes to matters of faith and things that honest God, I'm for it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, others may have their reasons. Others may have their reasons. But my reason for being involved is because this thing, to me, is not party politics. This is beyond party politics to me. It's a national asset that will outlive every one of us. And generations after us will come and see it and give God the glory. When generations come and go there, they won't talk about a political party. They will see the glory of God, what will be done there. It will blow your mind that people will stand there and will praise the Lord. Are you hearing me, somebody? Irrespective of your political persuasions. Now, I know that everybody has their argument. I've heard a lot of things. People have come to me of different party persuasions, and I've said all kinds of things. And I said to me, why are you involved? Why should you be involved? And I say, you know something? Give me a break. I'm not part of your political parties. I don't belong to any political party. I am an ambassador of the gospel. And, and give me, listen, I've been preaching for 41 years. I've dealt with presidents who have come and gone. Give me a little credit. Give me a little credit, though, that if I'm not smart, cry, I have some discernment. And it's not, it's very difficult to fool me. That's all I'll say. It's very difficult to fool me. Before I got involved with the National Cathedral, I sought a meeting with the president one-on-one. -on -one. I'm telling you. And I said, Mr. President, I need clarity about this National Cathedral. I want you to talk to me. I need clarity. And I asked him some very strong questions. And after he answered my questions, I walked away. And I said, I'm involved. Simple. Don't ask me what did you ask him because you are not the one involved. And the venue we are dealing with, the venue we are dealing with, looking at all the other venues we have looked at, is the, is the best place for now. Because I am of one of those who thought we should find another venue. And I went to some areas. I went to some areas to look at some other venues. For instance, where the military cemetery is. I was one of those who were eyeing that place. Then after searching and looking at it, I realized that that is designated for the military cemetery. And I said, I better find my way out of this quickly. <laughs> you go and tell the military, you want to use the place designated for the Allah's honor. For what? Don't even try it. Tell somebody, don't even try it. And then I went to another place. And I asked questions. I drove there with my driver. I went places. And when I saw the complications and the international companies involved in everything, I realized that we might be better off here than some of the places some of us are looking at moving to. And I brought it up at the board meeting, my suggestion of other places. And I realized that at this place, 
There are nine judges and they have all been relocated and given another place better than where they were. There are only three more buildings which we are working and negotiating on and one we just resolved it. So you can sit there and talk and insult and say whatever because you have the right and freedom of speech. But don't underestimate the intelligence of some of us. That some of us are not blind and we don't belong to any political party. We are committed to the cause of Christ and the cause of a country and what is good for a future of a nation. On that note, everybody buy a ticket for the fundraising dinner. It's 28th of December, and we are selling a chair for $1,000, a table for $10,000. I need some of your secret monies, and some of you, your savings you are going to Dubai and Europe for. Use it to build, give us that money to build a national cartel that one day, you and your loved ones, and your children's children may use that. One day, one of your sons or daughters will be president of Ghana and shall benefit from that thing. Put your hands together and give God praise. Go ahead. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but uh -huh. against principalities. You see? You see? You see the battle here? Our fight is not with human beings. Our fight is not. So when, sometimes when people oppose me and they fight me, eh, I ignore it. It's not that I don't know, I can fight all. Me, I came from the ghettos and I came from the street. I started fighting in my mother's womb before I was born. My mother went through all kinds of situations and she was bleeding for four months. She was lying in the pool of blood. Dr. Sokwa Mante said, Florence, you can't carry this person. So they did uh, D and C in those days, and they aborted the pregnancy. Months after, the stomach kept growing, and they, later they find out that she was carrying twins. And the D and C took one and left me, and I was hiding there. So me, my fight started before I was born. So if you talk about fighting, I'm used to fighting, but I fight wisely because I know that some of the fight. I've spoken to people. Who told me until I spoke to you? I was against this national cathedral. I was against it. And I thought that even you, Papa, Papa, you, you're allowing yourself to be used until I spoke to you. You've changed my mind. I'm on board. And I want you also to change your mind. I'm telling you. Because I've been with some of you for 40 years. Trust me on this one that I'm not blind. I'm very, very clear. I have my eyes together and my head together. And I'm not gaining anything and benefiting anything. Nobody is paying me anything. And nobody is forcing me to do anything. I'm doing it based on conviction for God and country. And you have to trust me, if ever, if ever I think there's some Hindu agenda. You know me, I'll come and tell you. But as of now, I don't see, I don't see any hidden agenda, I'll be honest with you. Amen? So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Princey what? Principalities. Is it single? No. But? Plural. Plural. So you are fighting what? Principalities. That's why you must belong to the home cells. That's why you can't stand alone. It's very dangerous to stand alone. They'll get you. I'm telling you. I've seen it happen. Even preachers, most powerful anointed preachers, the enemy got them because they were isolated. His strategy is to give you reasons why you must not be involved with the brethren. Reasons why you must be isolated. Reasons why you must sit in the church and not be committed to anything, to anybody. He would justify why you should be isolated, why you shouldn't be involved, why you must not be committed. Somebody doesn't like you. Somebody hates you. This person is not holy. This person is not righteous. I will not get involved. They will talk about me. And he, listen, what have you done for God this whole year? Ask somebody, you. You've done things for your wife, your children, your husband, your loved one. What have you done for God? Ask them, what have you done for God? 
What is it that you've done for God? That if the Lord comes to you right now and say, give account for what you have done for me with the life I gave you. I gave you hell. I protected you. I delivered you. I bless you. What have you done for God? Show me. Tell me. And as an ambassador of Christ, I'm asking on the behalf of the Lord, what have you done for him? All we do is criticize. All we do is to attack. All we do is to fight. We fight everything. We fight everyone. We are even fighting God. We fight everything. When are you going to start fighting the enemy? The real enemy. Principalities. Look at me. As annoyed as you might think I am, I don't stand alone. No. Malawa Kasuba Hasis. Elufalaku Allah I'm connected everywhere. Gelukuva Adila Hasawatias. So you sit down there and think because you are blessed and you have some money, some secret money and some connections. You have arrived. The day the enemy will come at you. And your money won't help you. You will see the need of brethren. We have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. Living long, passing from premature death to life has a lot to do with your connection and fellowship with the brethren. I don't need a prophetic eye to tell when the enemy is going to kill and destroy a believer. It's very simple. I watch them. When I see signs of isolation and developing a critical spirit of the brethren, they become critical of everybody but themselves. Critical of the church. Critical of every preaching. This preaching I'm preaching right now, tomorrow it will be an issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know it. There are people who are critical about everything you say. They will, they will analyze it by the time you hear what I preach today. Tomorrow, it will shock you. You will say, but I was there. I was in the service. That wasn't what he said. The, the way they will twist the thing, give it some headline. Yeah. Principalities. Against there are principalities. Oh. Palities. Say palities. Say many. Say there are many. Akudavazidi balagadas. But a day shall come when everyone will give an account of what they did against others. That day of reckoning shall come. I'm telling you. Nobody goes caught free. And nobody goes unpunished that touches others innocently or you use others to cause others pain for gain, for money, for influence, for exposure, or for a cause that doesn't glorify Elohim. It's just a matter of time. You and your children and your house, in the name of Jesus, will face judgment and punishment for it. So keep on going on. Go ahead. Crucify me. It's a matter of time. I will rise again. But you may not rise. So go ahead. Go ahead. Against powers. Against what? Powers. Plural or singular? Plural. Powers. Many. But let them become as chaff. Do unto them, O oh Lord. As you did to Zamura, Aluba Kata, by the group, Madakusaya of Keshon. Let their tongues be divided. Let them turn on one another. Yea, 
Let them betray their own cause. Let them be as smoke before the wind. Let another take their place. Let their defenses depart from them. Let their confidence be destroyed. Plural powers. Go ahead. Against the rulers of the darkness. Of Against the what? The rulers. What? Rulers of the darkness. Do you see? Rulers. Plural. And you are standing there. I don't want to get involved in the cells. I don't get involved in everything. I'm just minding my business. You are minding what? You are minding your business. Satan is also minding you. So keep minding your business. He's on your case. You are minding your business. No soldier goes to war alone. Have you ever seen any soldier with AK-47 on the street and say, I am of the armed forces of Ghana. I'm going to war on the behalf of the Republic of Ghana against another nation. You are joking. And that is what a lot of you are doing. You are holding spiritual AK-47, moving in the spirit. I'm a soldier of the army of the Lord. I belong to the army of the Lord, the Universal Church of Jesus Christ. I don't belong to any local church. All these local churches and pastors, they are all 419. I've studied them all. They are not correct. I'm the only correct one. I'm going to war on the behalf of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my captain. Go. A bullet will hit you, eh? And you won't know where it came from. You just pow! And your AK-47 will be on the ground. Go ahead. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wickedness. Say wickedness. I command your deliverance from wickedness. Uh-huh. In high places. 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 So it's not just one high place. Oh. Places in high places. Conspiracy in high places. Wickedness in high places. That's why you have to pray for those in authority. I'm telling you. Because there is wickedness in high places. Wickedness of the highest order. Stand on your feet. We'll continue on Wednesday. This morning, John 17, 15, quickly. Let's pray on that. John 17, 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I pray for them. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, uh -huh. but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Keep them from what? From the evil. You see, another translation said, keep them from the evil one. Say the evil one. Say evil is not something. Say evil is not something. Evil is someone. If you think everybody is happy for you when you are happy, you are joking. Not everybody is happy for your children. I'm telling you. Not everybody is happy for your marriage working and your wife or your husband, not everybody is happy. There is someone who is evil and his target is good and is not satisfied until he destroys good. But in this Christmas season, we pray for deliverance for families. We command deliverance from family crisis. We command deliverance from national crisis. We command deliverance from social, political, financial crisis. In the name of Jesus, we command the preservation of the sitting president and the former president from John Ajekum Kufo, J.J. Rawlings, John Ramani Mahama. We command deliverance on the political scene, the financial scene, the economic and social. Let there be deliverances. In the name of Jesus, somebody open your mouth. Command deliverances. Wherever you are, command deliverance for your nation. Command deliverance for your nation and for families. 
can't hear you. Open your mouth. Say something. It's dangerous to hold your peace. Unless you say something, nothing moves. Move it. You have to say something. Unless you say something, nothing moves. Let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. Let there be deliverances. Let there be a way out. Let our airways be saved. Let our highways be saved. Our high seas and rivers be saved. Open your mouth, somebody. Say something. Prayer moves things in the spirit. Prayer moves things. Change some things. Overturn some things. Override some things. Deal with all forms of wickedness. All forms of injustice. Override and overturn. Any form of injustice. Any form of wickedness. On the political scene. The social scene. On the judicial sin, I need somebody to pray. In the name of Jesus, somebody open your mouth. Open fire. You know, few years ago, few years ago in this country about five to seven top surgeons in this country top surgeons in, in Ghana he went for some program in Kumasi or somewhere on their way back they had an accident and all of them died at the spot you call it accident? No there's no accident in the spirit do you know what it causes as a nation to lose those five to seven surgeons on one day? Do you know how many years it took to develop those guys for them to become the top surgeons in this country? For all of them to die in a day? I'm telling you, folks, that is what you call evil. 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 May such not be repeated in the name of Jesus. Let such an evil happening be averted in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are devices in the hearts of men. Devices. But the Bible says the counsel of the Lord shall prevail. The counsel of the Lord prevails when we enforce the counsel of the Lord. For in the heart of men, many are the devices. Some of you, the fact that you are doing well is upsetting evil. The evil one is not happy about some of you doing well or your children doing well. He wants your children to become wayward. He wants your children to be become a proverb, a disgrace, an embarrassment to make a point and a statement. The fact that you can put bread on your table, evil is not happy with that. The fact that you are doing well. Yesterday, at the former president's dinner, I was leaving and some people were taking pictures of, with me. And I took pictures with a lot of people. When a particular individual came to take picture with me, I blocked him. I blocked him. And I said to Bishop Johnny, we have to leave here now. And I blocked him because I felt this uh, funny feeling and I understood. And later I got it that the, it wasn't about picture. It was an agenda. 
to take a picture with me and to take it to their oracles. So when I came, I anointed myself. And before I went to bed, I proclaimed, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord over my spirit, soul, and body. I enforce the Lordship of the Son of God over my spirit, soul, and body. And I said, anyone that takes my name and my picture anywhere for evil, let it boomerang. Say boomerang. Put your hands together. Command to boomerang. Anyone who has taken your son, your daughter, your children, anywhere to hurt you, let it boomerang. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, make them as Zid and as the princes of Zamuna and of Oreb in the name of Jesus. That is in Psalm 83. You can read it on your own. When you go home, there are some things you can deploy from there and ask God to do unto them as Zid and the princes of Zamuna and Oreb in the name of Jesus. By the brook of Keshem, Palau Kuwahasis. Lift up your hands now. Between now and 31st, cross. Any unforeseen, unexpected crisis, strange winds, and family storms, national storms in the womb of time. To take us by surprise. In the name of Jesus. Let it not escape our eyes. Let the watchmen of the church in Ghana wake up. Let our seers be on the alert. Let the veils be destroyed. Let the church come alive. In the name of Jesus. Let the Lord affect every evil. Command deliverance or evil. For sons, daughters, children. Husbands, wives, family. Sitting president, former president, lift up prayer. Pray on the political scene. Pray financial, economic scene. Lift up prayer. Command deliverances. Financial crisis. Family crisis. Deceptions. Deceptions. Amen. If he's a, oh yeah, oh he's not a dog. Hallelujah. If he's a, if he's a, oh yeah, oh yeah, na na.
His army shall He lead. His army shall He lead. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. somebody quickly face somebody quickly two or three two or three just face somebody quickly pray for them don't hold your hands command the deliverance of everyone here from evil evil means a lot of things pray for somebody's deliverance those of you online pray for somebody pray for somebody Somebody's
Now, now, there are two scriptures I want us to enforce quickly before we leave. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 from verse 7 to 8. The 7th and the 8th verse. Let a thousand fall by our side. Let 10,000 fall on our right hand. But it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes we will see the outcome of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. I declare that a thousand shall fall on your side. I declare, let legions of demons fall on your right hand. It shall not come near your dwelling. Go to verse 9 and 10. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge. He said the Lord is my refuge. Mm -hmm. Even the most high thy habitation. Mm -hmm. There shall no evil before thee. Said there shall no evil before my nation. My house. Any of my loved ones. Or this house. No evil shall befall us. Now. Before. And after. 31st night. They shall no evil before us. No plague shall come down our dwelling. Open your mouth and declare it. Don't just read it. Say it. Declare it. No evil. No evil. No evil. No evil shall befall me. My house. This house. Any of my loved ones. Home or abroad. There shall no evil befall us. No evil shall befall us. No plague shall come near our dwelling. No evil. No plague. Now, Psalm 91, verse 5 and 6. Furthermore, I declare on authority that you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. You will not be moved. You will not be moved by the terror by night. You will not be subject to any form of assassination. Any arrow that flies by day will miss you, it will miss your children, it will miss your house. It will miss this nation. The arrow that fly by day, by night, it will not come near your dwelling. That arrow is averted. That arrow is intercepted. Say intercepted, intercepted, intercepted in the name of Jesus. Now for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. The pestilence that walketh in darkness. Any plague, any pestilence in the shadows, in the dark, that has targeted anyone here your household your children your loved one home and abroad let it be intercepted 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 open your mouth say intercepted 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 in the name of jesus uh -huh. no for the, no for the destruction that wasted at noonday any wind of destruction any form of distraction in the womb of time, unknown, unforeseen, unexpected, in the womb of time, against any individual, our families, your children, your loved one, home or abroad, wherever it's coming from, in the name of Jesus, let it be intercepted. Intercepted. Open your mouth, say intercept. 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 Any storm. Any wind of destruction in the womb of the enemy, let it be intercepted. 